Miranda, as tensions remain high in Charlotte, yesterday, following the first night of violence, we had an opportunity to talk with one of our viewers here on America Talks Live, a self-described African-American Trump supporter, Trenton, from Buffalo, New York. My take is this. I've been driving around this country for years. I've never been stopped because I don't present that stereotype. I don't carry a gun in my car. But I will say this. It's unfortunate what's going on. But... I don't want to hear the truth that the left wants me to hear. I figured he had a gun because the cops is not going to sh get out of her car, his or her car, and shoot you. The problem is, though, it's like putting dye in water. It's not going to – I mean, this is going to be a very, very crucial issue, and Donald Trump might have trouble with this because you see these blacks on TV. They're jumping on cars. I'm thinking, what an idiotic way to express yourself. I understand where they're coming from, though, but I never had those issues, and I'm from the inner city. And I don't live there now, but I understand. Do I have concerns driving? Not one. So that is what Trenton had to say. And obviously, we invite your questions and comments at 1-877-NEWSMAX. That's 1-877-639-7629. And we have quite the panel assembled for our discussion this afternoon. Here on the news desk, directly alongside me, we have Newsmax insider and veteran political commentator Clarence McKee, also right here in our lineup and that's kind of a pun intended since he used to be a detective a retired florida police detective tom watley via skype from fort uh, fort lauderdale ed pizzuoli president of the trip scott law firm also via skype international reporter margaret howell we thank you very much now as we are here first up the brother of keith lamont scott the charlotte man shot by police was captured on video calling white people devils. Let's look and listen. You just know that all white people are f***ing devils. And make sure you air that one. Air, air that, that Don't take that All down. white cops are f***ing devils and white people. Clarence McKee, first to you. The power of a narrative beyond the facts. A, a black police chief in Charlotte, mm -hmm. a black police officer, uh, a, a black man slain, and exactly. his brother says all white people are devils. Well, talk like that's probably going to get Mr. Trump about five to ten more points in North Carolina and all over the country. Remember back in 1968, uh, Nixon, you're all too young, but... No, no, uh, I remember uh, Law and Order. I was the, ten uh, years old. Yeah, yeah. it's ten. The um, Nixon campaign and the, hum and the Humphrey campaign, it was a year of riots. It was a close election. And if this keeps up, these rioters, uh, looters killing people, shouting people down. The public, independents especially, are going to say, okay, this might just tilt it over. Uh, you respect the police. There are some bad ones, but most of them are good. For many years, we kept hearing, we need some black policemen. We want black police chiefs. Well, we get black cops, we get black policemen, and the same element that's so negative that says, we don't care if they're black or white, they're still blue, is still around. So you have to go to the people who are law-abiding and cramped, stop this looting and the police have to be tough and defend the homeowners and the business owners. So where are the people going to go who just lost their jobs from the lie rioting and loot looting? Just like in Ferguson. So this guy can talk and yell and scream all he wants to. The media loves to see it, but it just hurts the law abiding people. Tom Watley is a retired detective. Your take on what we've seen in Charlotte and really nationwide over the past year. Well, I can tell you that there, you know, white police officers, and I was a white police officer, I worked in a very diverse community, um, strong, large, one of the largest Haitian populations in the United States here in Palm Beach County, as well as uh, a large African American community and Latino community. And, and of course, everybody blended in. Uh, we did have our moments where there were, you know, in my career where there were two or three police shootings, but the community never reached this point. Uh, we had er riots in the early 80s. Um, but we squelched those rather quickly. Uh, but with, with regard to Charlotte, um, I, I'm baffled that in Tulsa there's no marching, there's no rioting, there's no damaging buildings, and there was no gun involved. But here we know there was a gun involved, and it's clear. Uh, I know why he's not releasing the tape, uh, because for evidentiary purposes, in the event he's got to present it to a grand jury or, or they've got to not taint a jury by releasing evidence, uh, they've got to be, walk a fine line. And I believe today he's, uh, the chief said he's also going to show uh, the family the video to satisfy them. And this is where it's time for a lawyer. So let's go to Ed Pozzuoli via Skype from Fort Lauderdale today. Ed, you just heard the talk about the video. 
Should it be released at all? So the, the, the police chief is obviously under some pressure, or is he doing the right thing just showing it to the family? The process needs to be protected, and those who are involved need to be protected because, J.D., you know, facts matter. Facts matter in this instance, and so you've got to protect the process. The process here is what really happened, and that really matters. I don't think a lot of the people who were out on the street last night in Charlotte uh, rioting, they were not protesting, they were rioting. The facts don't matter. But in the cool of the day, both police officers, the legal system, and rational Americans are going to understand that facts matter and the process needs to be protected here. Maggie, how facts matter, uh, but perceptions you cannot ignore. I got to tell you, just as I see this, and it's unfortunate to put a political spin on this, but North Carolina, one of the critical swing states, Mr. Trump is up by five. You had the initial night following the shooting, tense, but then it blew apart last night. And I'm just kind of curious. Charlotte is a major air hub. We know George Soros money was behind the extended tension in Ferguson. Do you believe the left is playing politics with people's emotion, trying to capitalize on street violence in the aftermath of Charlotte? Oh, there's no question that Soros is funding Black Lives Matter, which is a national group that sponsors terrorism. I'm sorry. And looking at the facts of this, you talked about shaping that narrative. Frankly, this began, I mean, we had police officers responding in North Charlotte serving a warrant. This man wasn't involved in that warrant serve. He was sitting in a car, and we saw a rapper take to uh, social media, Facebook live streaming, immediately after this happened, shaping a false narrative that incited violence. I believe his name is Mills Gill. And, uh, you know, calling for, the, you know, people to take to the streets in violent protest because of misinformation. So that, absolutely, Soros is behind Black Lives Matter. There's no question about it to answer your point. But more importantly, shaping the narrative on social media is, is critical in these early junctures of, of, of situations like this because he was able to effectively take that narrative and incite mass violence with it. He's one of a dozen that I found in my, in my investigating this. You know, Maggie, it's interesting you use that term, shaping the narrative. Seems to be fairly ineffective in terms of foreign policy vis-a-vis -vis the Iranians, but very good if you want to play the politics of race and popular culture here in the United States. Now, Clarence, you mentioned earlier 1968. Donald Trump was on the telephone doing uh, phone interviews on television earlier today, called up uh, the Fox News Channel and said... Our nation's leadership needs to be uniting the country in the wake of the fallout from Charlotte. Here's exactly what he had to say. You have to have law and order. At the same time, Pete, you have to have, you know, you have to have a certain spirit, a certain unity. And there's no unity. You look at the level of hatred, the, you know, the rocks being thrown and everything happening. It's so sad to see, you know, that this is the United States of America. I mean, it's so sad to see. Clarence, you talked about the echoes of history, 1968, exactly. rhyming now. Ironically, Dick Nixon, of all people, much earlier in Donald Trump's life, said, if you ever run together. for public office, you're going to be an effective candidate. It seems, as you mentioned, that theme of law and order has uh, risen to prominence again. And the big problem is, where is the black leadership and the white leadership liberals? They are so good. This administration has done more to divide the country racially. A black president, two black attorney generals, the first black attorney general played the race card every time he could. The country's divided. Black caucus can come out and have a 30-minute press conference on birther. You haven't heard a peep out of those guys and ladies over this issue. They don't say a thing. They subtly condone it and let the radical guys who talk about killing white people have the, have the floor. But there will be a backlash on all of this. And... I'll tell you, remember the silent majority? You showed earlier, or I was watching, 7% black support for Trump. I believe that it's very possible for Mr. Trump to get 12 to 14% of the black vote. There are a lot of blacks, like the man from Buffalo, who are supporting Trump but would never say so. And I'm hearing the numbers are as large as perhaps 20%. Exactly. Uh, closing moment, we're going to lose our lawyer, oh, uh, Ed Pozzuoli. So I got to let Ed, the meter's Ed. running with Ed uh, down in <laughs> Fort Lauderdale. Ed, in, in all seriousness to you, sir, where we are as a society, the president of the United States, his first job out of school was as a, quote, community organizer. In everyday English, that's a street agitator. 
The silence has been deafening from the White House thus far. Your reaction, 20 seconds. Vacuum creates uh, other opportunity of chaos. But Donald Trump has stepped in and said, look, what do you have to lose? Because the people most affected are the black community being impacted by black on black crime. There's no talking about Chicago anymore. There should be. If he focuses on that, he, I believe Clarence is right, upwards 15, 20 percent black vote potential for Donald Trump. An outstanding panel. Sorry, we're going to lose you, Brother Pizzuoli, but more staying and we're adding to the discussion, including your calls at 1 877 Newsmax. That's 1 877 639 7629. It's America Talks Live.